Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2013 Advanced. We are part way through looking at web apps in Access 2013 and the last thing we did was to make a change to a form to improve the maintenance of information about movies, specifically about the choice and definition of genre for a movie. We just added a genre of mystery to the movie 12 Angry Men. I'm looking at the database through a web browser, so this is the user's view of that movie's information. If you recall, one of the last things I said was how good Access 2013 is in terms of providing you with pretty much all of the basic interface components that you need to maintain data in a web app. I've just added the genre mystery here to this movie. If I wanted to remove that, all I would need to do would be to click on it. And if I click on the delete button here, confirmation this is all automated click on yes and I'm back to just having that one genre definition again now what I'm looking at now is the browser view of the database and there are two or three things on there that I don't really want to see I'm happy to see the table movie but I really don't want to see the country table and I certainly want, don't want people to be able to go in there and start deleting, adding and so on countries and I don't want them to be able to go in and start working on genre either. So there are usually some tables in a database that I don't want users to be able to see. So let's deal with that issue first. So I'm back in Access again. I'm going to choose the table country and one of the little icons, and normally called the gear icon here, if I click on the settings and actions gear icon, one of the options there is hide. Now that doesn't hide it from you, it just hides it from users when they're accessing the database via a browser. So let's click on hide for that. Note it gets a little sort of dashed line around it here and you can see it's slightly faded. If I do the same now with genre, and I'll do the same with movie genre as well. Note the other options on that menu there, you can go into edit table but, but you can also rename and you can also delete. Okay, now let's go back into the browser and see what that looks like. So there we are, we only now have the option of looking at movies. Now there are various other things that you may want to do to tidy up the user interface from the general user's point of view. For instance, we've got over here Tubble Movie, which maybe will confuse a lot of people. Maybe it'd be better to have a better name there. Obviously, we don't want to change the name of the table in the database, but the term over here could be more helpful. Similarly, with this list form, having this thing over here, Tubble Movie Genre, may well mystify some people. So let's do something about those. If I right click on Tubble Movie in the app, I can just click on Rename and give that a different name. I could just, for instance, type in there Movies. Hit the Enter key. Now, in addition, down here I've got the Tubble Movie list selected. So let's go into Edit the list view of that. Let me just move the field list out of the way. And the other problem we've got here is this prompt here, Tubble Movie Genre. Now one option would be to just click in this field and just leave it blank. And in addition, the height of this particular control, I could maybe reduce this a little bit if I felt that there weren't going to be a huge number of genre. So let's close that, save the changes, and again, we'll preview it in the browser. Now, note how the list on the left, it just says movies. And here, having removed that superfluous title, not only does it read a lot better over here, just saying genre drama, but the add button just says add now. So if I click on add, it will still perform exactly the same functionality that it did before. but it'll be a lot more easy to read. Now that's a couple of examples of how you can go through and make the user interface side of your web app a lot easier for users to understand and to follow what's going on. 
Now we're going to look at some other important aspects of web apps in just a moment but just a couple of things to point out here. One of them is that a lot of the symbols, icons that are used as I mentioned before are going to seem quite unusual to some people and take a little bit of getting used to but also the way that all of this works is quite different. So for instance let's suppose that I wanted to edit the information about the selected movie here in the movie list. If I click on the scene it box I might get quite frustrated by the fact that nothing happens but you need to go into edit mode and then you can change the data and then when you finish changing the data you can click on save. So the actual mechanics take a little bit of getting used to. Note the message in the top right corner there changes saved and again bear in mind for your users that they may also not be familiar with this type of interface but I think you'll find that once they are that it actually works very well. If we look again for example at the plus here add, watch what happens if I do an add. You get a blank movie that's great, you can put all the details in there, you can do a save but again it looks a little bit different and notice how the new appears there after the record that you had selected. So again a couple of things to get used to there. I'm going to cancel this particular one. Now given that my users are going to be accessing this database via a web browser I need to be very careful that I validate what they put into the database. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to put in some validation. If I select the movies table there and right click and go into edit table get the familiar design view for the table. Now I can set up a pretty complex validation rule and in fact I'm going to do this in a couple of ways in this section. So let's put a simple validation rule in to begin with. Let's suppose that before somebody can save a movie to the movie database it must have a title say just to begin with. So click on validation rule and the only condition we're going to put on at the moment is that, let me start typing open square bracket T, realizes it's a database field title, so title is not null. So that's my validation rule. Now I'm going to click on validation message to put in a validation message. and there's my validation message. Then I'm going to close and save the changes. Note because we've changed data integrity rules Access is going to have to check to make sure that everything is OK. It's happy about that, let's take a look at it in the browser. OK so let's add a movie. Uh, we'll put in a year of release of 1964 a country of or say USA and that's it we'll click on save and there's our message you must enter a title click on OK then I can cancel that so that's straightforward validation which of course I could build up to be much more complex than that so I hope by now you can start to see how you're going to be able to develop some pretty good web apps using Access 2013. But by now you're probably saying, OK, but when do I get to write some VBA? Well, the bad news as far as web apps are concerned is that you're not going to be able to use VBA in Access 2013. Whether VBA at some stage is in some way transformed so that it's usable or whether Access 2013 gets a new super programming language that can be run on the web remains to be seen. But there is good news and the good news is that you can use macros in your web apps. And that's one of the reasons why I've done quite a bit of work on macros rather than VBA in this course, although we've covered both to some extent, because macros are usable in your web apps. And let's have a quick look at using a macro in this web app now. So what I want to look at with this example is a different way of approaching validation. Clearly what I'm going to do in this example could be done as a validation exercise in a similar way to the one that we did just now. But we're going to do this as an event handling exercise. So I'm going to go into edit table. On the table tools I see design tab. 
and these are the events that we can react to on insert on update and on delete we're going to go for on insert and we're going to write a macro to deal with on insert and what we're going to do is this we're going to say if now the if condition is going to be related to what the user has typed in year of release and we're going to say if the year of release is less than let's say 1900 we don't expect any movies earlier than 1900 action is going to be raise error and the error message we're going to put as the description of the error message year of release cannot be before 1900 and then we're going to put another action in pretty much the same principle this time we're going to say of course we're in great danger here of having to update this every year but let's for the moment say okay then we'll click on close save that If I just click on the design tab again, note that the on insert button there is now highlighted to show that we have got an on insert condition. Let's now just try to add a new movie to the database. And the first thing I'm going to do is to add a movie with a valid year of release. So the movie I'm going to add is Die Hard. its year of release 1988 country USA let's save that one that's fine now let's add another one this one is going to be Batman Begins and the year of release I'm going to deliberately mistype it it's actually 2005 but I'm going to put 2015 again country USA save that one and now I get the message year of release cannot be after 2013 so there we are now I'm going to have to correct that error before I can continue so let's change that to 2005 let's try saving that and there we are notice you will have seen in the list that when it gave me the error it had already shown Batman Begins in the list the on insert effectively happens after the insert itself but it then insists that I correct that error before I can carry on and do something else so that might sound like a rather strange way of doing things but it works perfectly well so let's suppose again now that I try to add another new movie and in this case again I put the wrong year in I try to do a save watch what happens there it is in the list year of release cannot be after that if I get to this point note that the only options available to me are the cancel and the save and if I think well I haven't got the right information I cannot proceed to save this record and actually my web app won't let me do anything else until I do what I've got to do is cancel watch what happens on the list if I now cancel that on the grounds that I can't find the correct year of release I cancel and all record of that has now been basically rolled back in the database so that's how you build basic web apps in Access 2013 I've got a couple of other things to quickly cover one of them is that there is a little bit of more bad news and that is you cannot take a desktop database and turn it into a web app the user interface sides of it are so completely different that you really have to build those forms yourself you can import tables and their contents as we've seen and many of the things that you do in desktop databases work pretty much the same in the web app as well so for instance let me just go back into access for a moment you can for instance create your own queries if you click on the advanced here and click on query you can do a query say on movie table 
and so on and the way that this works is pretty much exactly the same as it is in the desktop version so there are many things you can do pretty much the same you have totals options you can use parameters in queries and so on but as I say it's important to recognize you cannot just convert an existing database and the second thing to point out is that although very often the way that you do these is different in the web app version the end results are very similar and the overall approach follows the same sort of general principles so for instance having created a new query that one there which presents the movies in chronological order if I wanted a view of that I could click on the plus here to get a new view I'm gonna call that movie chrono Not a very good name but that will do for now I could say the view type is a datasheet view and the record source will be the query that I've just created. Click on add new view. That's now added. Let's now go into web browser. Click on movie chrono. And there are the movies in chronological order. And of course, I could change the sizing of the cells here to make it a bit easier to use and so on. But the principles are the same. The way you go about it is quite different when you're working with web apps. When I first started building web apps a few months ago now, I did find that they were somewhat shaky and I think Microsoft did have quite a bit of trouble with them to begin with. But I've been using them for quite a while now and I do think things are considerably more stable and I can really see a great use for being able to build applications with access and publish them via SharePoint to put together still relatively straightforward database applications, but ones that you can put together very quickly and without access to much more complex and expensive tools so I'm building web apps that I'm hosting on office 365 accounts and they're beginning to work pretty well so that's it for this section I'll see you in the next one